Okay, this video will finish up the worksheet on Lewis structures. Uh, the next thing we need to work, work on is the, to show a 3D sketch of the molecule and label the bond angles. And so I'm going to use this sheet that you guys have to talk about bond angles. Um, and you're, you probably can know what the answer is without me telling you. So look, if you have two domains, that's a linear geometry. Um, carbon dioxide, do you remember? You have the Lewis structure for it drawn. The carbon has two domains around it. Each of those double bonds is a domain. They take on a linear electronic geometry and the molecule itself is linear. What do you think the angle is between from that bonding area to the other bonding area? Well, it should make sense that that is 180 degrees. Okay. Um, for a trigonal planar molecule, we had one on your sheet that was, well, we had more than one that was trigonal planar. But um, in this molecule, carbon has three domains around it. It's a trigonal planar molecule. What do you think each of these bond angles should be? For a trigonal planar molecule, that's going to be 120 degrees. So those, I think you would have known without, uh, you could have figured that out just based on your math experience and a little bit of geometry that was introduced <laughs> probably back in sixth grade. Now, tetrahedral is a little different because, um, remember, we might draw a tetrahedral molecule looking like this. And so... Don't think, oh, that's 90 degrees, because we talked about this in the last lecture. They're not really in that shape. This is the shape of a tetrahedral molecule. So tetrahedral bond angles are 109.5 degrees. And there, there'll be some variation there that you might discuss more in organic chemistry, but they're all based around that 109.5. And as you noticed on your sheet, we didn't encounter any sp3d hybridized and the bond angle on those actually would depend on which ones you're looking at, okay? Because they don't, they don't have a consistent bond angle like these others we've discussed. So you will not have those on the test, but you are aware that they exist. Um, the other thing I want to go over with you is the difference between a sigma bond and a pi bond. So... A sigma bond, it is given the symbol, a sigma symbol. And in a sigma bond, the electrons overlap directly in between the two atoms. Okay, and to show you an example of this, um, you guys know that hydrogen, its electron configuration is 1s1. And let me get this. Okay, and you also know that an electron in an s orbital is in a spherical orbital. Okay, so that's my, the dot's my nucleus and then the sphere showing that the electron's somewhere there. Okay, and then here's another hydrogen atom. And it's also 1s1 electron. Well, if these two come together, they will form a hydrogen molecule. But note when the hydrogen on the left and the hydrogen on the right come together, where do their orbitals overlap? They overlap directly in between the two atoms. And so this might be what we would draw for the Lewis structure for hydrogen, okay? That is a sigma bond because the overlap is directly in between the two atoms. Now, a pi bond, and it's the symbol pi, but it's not 3.14. In a pi bond, um, the electrons overlap um, above and below oops, the plane of the atoms. And so, 
high binds happen, typically, y'all know that's a P orbital, okay? And so directly in between the two atoms might be here. But when these come together, they're not going to overlap. That little red line would be a sigma bond. They're not going to overlap directly in between the two atoms. They're going to overlap above and below the plane of the atoms. Okay, and even though there's two areas of overlap, that's still only one bond. Okay, but that's a pi bond. So, in summary, that's what's going on for sigma pi bonds, but the summary is actually a lot easier. You know that we have single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. And in understanding sigma and pi, you have to account for bond, each line. A single bond is a sigma bond. In a double bond, one of them's a sigma, one of them's a pi. In a triple bond, one is sigma and two are pi. Okay, and I mean, that is the, that is a simple summary of sigma and pi bonds. And you would typically look at the molecule as a whole and count all the single bonds, all the double bonds, all the triple bonds. Okay, so let's go through the worksheet and let's do the bond angles. And uh, I'm not worried about a 3D sketch. And let's talk about sigma and pi bonds and then we'll tackle that last box on there. So if we go back to the beginning, um, for a water molecule, and we talked about this last time, I don't have it written on this slide, but we know that water, um, it's oxygen's the central atom, tetrahedral geometry, it's sp3 hybridized, and it's a bent molecule. I think that one was talked about on the other slide where I, I had the, um, the, showing you the tetrahedral, what it looked like. <clears throat> so the bond angle for this it's simply based on the electronic geometry. The bond angle is gonna be 109.5 degrees. I'm gonna jump slides again, guys. To do bond angle, you're, you're looking at this. Electronic geometry, bond angle. Electronic geometry, bond angle, etc. Okay? Um, water, where'd it go? There it is. It's got two single bonds in it. So that's why it's two sigma and zero pi. And if you didn't write zero pi, it's understood. You meant zero. So at this point, uh, well, let's, let's do some more. HF does not have a bond angle um, because when you're doing a bond angle, it's the angle between these two bonds, like here on water. What is that angle? Well, look at HF. There's only one, there's no other bond to reference. Okay? The same with oxygen. There's only one bonding area. There's, there's nothing else to reference that bonding area. So there's no bond angle. Uh, same for carbon monoxide. So when there's two atoms, you don't write a bond angle because there's not two bonding areas. But we can do sigma and pi. In HF, There's one sigma bond. In oxygen, one is sigma and one is pi, because it's a double bond. In carbon monoxide, one is sigma and two are pi. Okay, from here, I want you guys to pause the video and go through and answer all the others, the sigma, the bond angle and the sigma and pi, and then start back up and check what you got. Okay, so ammonium ion, you're checking now. It's 109.5 degree bond angle. All four are sigma. Sulfur trioxide, 120 degree bond angle. Three are sigma, one are pi. Chlorites, 109.5 degrees. Two sigma. Sulfite, 109.5 degrees, two are sigma, 
formaldehyde is 120 degrees. Three sigma, one pi. Carbon dioxide is 180 degrees. Two sigma, two pi. Thiocyanate is 180 degrees, and whichever structure you're looking at, it's two sigma, two pi. Nitrate is 120 degrees, three sigma, one pi. Nitrogen dioxide is 120 degrees, two sigma, one pi. Peroxide is 109.5 degrees, three sigma. This one is 180 degrees. And I should say on these, because there's more than one, it doesn't matter if you're doing this bond angle or if you're doing this bond angle. They're both 109.5. And on the next one, this one's 180 and this one's 180. So it, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. Uh, as a whole, the molecule has three sigma and two pi bonds. Okay, now let's tackle that last box. Uh, there's two questions in the last box. The first is, is the overall structure an ion? Is it ionic? Or is it covalent? Okay, so you know it's an ion because what does an ion have? An ion has a charge. You know it's an ion before you ever draw it because it says uh, NO3 with a minus one charge. See, that's an ion. How do you know if it's ionic? It's a metal and a nonmetal. Any kind of salt, sodium chloride, copper to nitrate, those are all ionic compounds. You know it's covalent because it's made up entirely of nonmetals. If it's covalent, you then have to go in and answer the question, is it polar or nonpolar? So first you answer this question, which one of these is it? If it's covalent, then you decide whether it's polar or nonpolar. And this is going to take some, some talking and explaining, polar or nonpolar. I really wish I could be in front of you guys and hold up model kits. Um, polar means there's a distribution of charge in the molecule. Polar means part of that molecule is negative. If you're looking at the whole thing on the outside of it, one side of it's negative, one side of it's positive, okay? Nonpolar means the charges are all evenly distributed. It's all balanced. So, uh, like if we looked at the Lewis structure for oxygen, um, oxygen's Lewis structure looks like this. There's no dipoles drawn on oxygen, right? When you have the same two atoms in a molecule, that's a nonpolar molecule. There's no dipole. A dipole helps you determine polarity. Now, there can be dipoles and it be nonpolar. But when there are no dipoles, when like this, oxygen, when it's the same two atoms, that's a nonpolar molecule. So how can there be dipoles and it still be nonpolar? Well, Look at carbon tetrachloride. This is carbon tetrachloride. Oh, I'm getting happy with my electrons. The dipoles all point towards the chlorine. Okay, but y'all know this is a tetrahedral molecule. You have a tetrahedral molecule. You have the exact same thing bonded at every location. All those dipoles are going to cancel each other out. So see, carbon tetrachloride would be nonpolar. Anytime you have the a tetrahedral molecule or even a trigonal planar molecule and you have the exact same thing bonded all the way around, then the dipoles are all going to cancel each other out. So it's going to be nonpolar. I mean, there's other examples as well, and we'll encounter those as we, as we work through the sheet. But that's just two areas of nonpolar. Polar would be a charge distribution. So 
like if y'all know methane, right? CH4 is nonpolar. See, it's what we just said. Tetrahedral molecule, the same thing bonded everywhere. But if I changed it, instead of making it methane, what if I did methyl chloride? Okay, CH3Cl. That means one of these has a Cl on it. That is a polar molecule. If you were to draw dipoles on it, you would draw one dipole here from carbon to chlorine. Remember, carbon-hydrogen bonds do not have dipole arrows. Carbon-hydrogen compounds are nonpolar compounds. If it's just carbons and hydrogens, like methane, um, but when you make a substitution, see, that's not a perfectly symmetrical tetrahedral molecule. Symmetry says nonpolar. I should have maybe written that in purple to follow what I'm doing here because I'm trying to do red polar. Symmetry says nonpolar. If it's asymmetrical, that's probably polar. Okay, now let's go through our worksheet. Water's done for you. But y'all, water is a bent molecule, and you can tell the way I have it drawn um, that, let's see, this side of the water molecule has a lot of negative on it. This side of the water molecule has some positive on it. There's a charge distribution in that molecule. Okay, water's polar. Look at the dipoles. They are not canceling each other out. Do you see these dipoles are drawn at angles? You would have to recognize that if you drew it like this, when you draw the dipoles, they don't look like they're at angles. But y'all on that flat piece of paper... Is this a linear molecule? No, it is still a bent molecule. Bent molecules are always polar. Okay, so water, to answer the first question, of course, it's a covalent compound and it's polar. All right, the next one, HF. Is it an ion? Is it ionic or is it covalent? It's covalent. Is it polar or nonpolar? It's polar. It's not symmetrical. Clearly, this side of the molecule has a whole bunch of negatives on it, and this side of the molecule has the positive. So it's a polar molecule. Oxygen. Is it an ion? Is it ionic or is it covalent? It is covalent. Is it polar or nonpolar? It's nonpolar. It's perfectly symmetrical. There's no dipole. It's the same two atoms. Carbon monoxide. Is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? It's covalent. Is it polar or nonpolar? It's polar. There's one dipole. It's not symmetrical. One of those is a C, one is an O. The dipole points towards the O. That means there, there's going to be more negative on this side, more positive on this side of the molecule. NH4, ammonium. It's called the ammonium ion. Is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? It is an ion. Since it's an ion, we do not answer polar or nonpolar because it clearly has a charge. But I want to just for argument's sake, let's pretend this didn't have a charge. Pretend it was just N with four H's, okay? And it's not an ion, pretend it was covalent. If it was N with four H's, would it be polar or nonpolar? It would be nonpolar because it's tetrahedral and it's perfectly symmetrical. Okay, the next one, sodium sulfide. Is it an ion? Is it ionic or is it covalent? It is ionic. It's a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, go through the rest of the sheet and answer ion, ionic, covalent, and then decide polar or nonpolar. And pause the video while you do that. 
Okay, now hopefully you've paused the video and started back up and we're on SO3 together. SO3 is a covalent compound and it's nonpolar. That double bond, its dipole is the same as those single bonds. If you will recall, we talked about resonance and we talked about how it doesn't matter which O that you double bond because that double bond is moving around to all of those O's. That's why it's nonpolar. The double bond does not make it asymmetrical because it's moving around. ClO2 negative is an ion. If it weren't an ion, because it's bent, it would have been polar. But because it's an ion, we don't label that. Sulfite is an ion. CH2O, it's covalent. And it is polar. It's not symmetrical. It only has one bond dipole. Carbon dioxide is covalent. And it is nonpolar. That one is drawn with the arrows pointing straight out from each other. And indeed, they do. It's a 180 degree linear molecule. So those two dipole arrows completely cancel each other out. Carbon dioxide's a symmetrical molecule, so it's nonpolar. Thiocyanate is an ion. Nitrate is an ion. Nitrogen dioxide is covalent, and it's polar. It's not symmetrical because it's bent. Bent molecules are always polar. Hydrogen peroxide is covalent, and it is a bent molecule, so it is polar. Acetylene, C2H2, is a covalent molecule. It is nonpolar. There's no dipole arrows drawn for it. It's just carbons and hydrogens. That's always a nonpolar compound. Okay? I encourage you to print another worksheet and work it again in preparation for your test next week. Um, use this worksheet that you've completed as your key, but try to work it without looking at your notes. See if you can just do them all without looking at the steps, without looking at the chart. So, what we're looking at, let me get my calendar open. Um, next week, April 27 through May 1, you will take a test on chapters eight and nine. It'll be a Lewis structures test on Canvas. And we will also uh, do a review for the final next week. 